Well, welcome to my living room and more specifically to a special area in my living room. This is my library table. I refer to it a lot in all of my videos because it's a really special place to me and I spend a lot of time here. I have most of the books that I'm fascinated with at the moment, whether they're gardening books or flower arranging books or history books. I keep them all here so that they are at the ready and I can open them and peruse them at any time. Unlike a lot of people who I think have coffee table books and never look at them, I refer to mine very, very frequently and it's where I get lots of my ideas and lots of inspiration. But let me tell you how this, this kind of still life came together. Because it's not expensive at all to create a look like this that looks like it's in a magazine, but really it was very economical to compose. So number one, I started out with with just a table that I got at a garage sale. It was an old beat up table. I think I got it years ago, maybe for four or five dollars. And then what I did was just put a really nice cloth on it. This is just a burlap tablecloth that I got from Ballard Designs years ago to give it a little bit more oomph and flousiness underneath it. I just took an old blanket so that there is another layer underneath. That gives it a little bit more volume and makes it kind of puff out around the perimeter in a lovely way, I think. And then, this is probably my best tip, I ordered online a custom fitting piece of glass that perfectly is measured to top this table. It has a one inch bevel around the edge. I got it from a company called Dulles Glass and Mirror and I'll put a link in the description so that you guys can access it too. I don't know how many tables I have covered with their glass. I get it to a certain uh, size thickness and it makes the whole composition come together and I think a really expensive looking way. So there, there are where I place all of my wonderful books um, and then this beautiful arrangement. Now I always have some kind of massive arrangement and as the months progress I'll show you all of the different looks that I can get but whatever I put in the center as a centerpiece is always dramatic and it is always seasonal and it always is something that is large enough to make a statement so in this case here this is how this came together I took a uh, column candle candle stand that's kind of hard for me to say that is made out of wood it's very inexpensive i can't even remember where i got it maybe a couple dollars at the dollar store this woven basket that i just love came from goodwill i think it was all of three or four dollars and so i just created a pedestal vase by putting this uh, wicker basket on top centered very carefully on top of this columnar candle stand. Now let me show you inside. Because obviously baskets aren't waterproof, I have a Folgers coffee can in there. I find an empty plastic Folgers coffee can so uh, functional on so many different levels that I tend to kind of hoard them. So I can have a large arrangement in here that sits in here in a very stable way and it can hold lots of flowers. So now for the flower arrangement itself. I love the way it came together. I recently went to Simple Acre Cut Flower Farm in Mustang and I brought home buckets of fresh flowers from my friend Kristen and I came home with just masses of Queen Anne's lace in both white and this kind of burgundy color and they're the things that inspired the rest of the palette. So she had some like colored celosia that also has that deep red and I've got some kind of purple toned flowers of, I believe it's, is it Thai basil she told me or cinnamon basil? And then in addition to that, I've got some different colored celosia. So just different 
uh, flowery forms. But what I like are these round umbral forms that are then accented by kind of the more vertical spires of all of the different types of flowers. Now when I got them home, I wanted to add a little bit of my own garden so that I could create a look that was distinctly personal to my house. So of course I've got some Nandina foliage in here which I find indispensable in almost every flower arrangement. And right now as it has happens, the Nandina berries are the perfect plum color. They haven't adopted their full red color that they will at Christmas time. They have yet to adopt the intensity of that shade, but they're a beautiful plum color that really accentuates and is a great color echo, one of my favorite things, to all of these other flowers. The berries, the foliage, and then I've also got as an illuminating uh, touch, I've got some white snow on summer. So I think it all comes together just beautiful. I like my arrangements to be loose and airy. I like to channel Constant Spry a little bit more, I think, than FTD, and I'll put some information on Constant Spry below. She was a wonderful flower arranger who just really kind of set the stage for these kinds of, of garden to table, garden to vase, loose flowery arrangements. So I think it came all together just beautifully. Now, as an additional touch, I sent Hubs out out because this is just not only the flower color of the season but it's also the fruit color of the season and I got some beautiful intensely colored plums that are the exact hue and provides another color echo so you may ask do I really live like this? If you weren't here looking into my house, would it actually look like this? And I would say that 75% of the time, yes, it does look like this. Stuart, my photographer, is shaking his head. This is a gift I give to myself. It's not for my guests, it's for me. It makes this a beautiful area for me to hang out. It uh, makes me feel special. It makes me appreciate the beauty of my garden indoors and others' gardens indoors when it's too hot to enjoy them outside. It's a very quiet, contemplative spot. This uh, in the living room, especially in the winter time, is where I meditate in the morning so I can light a candle and I am just surrounded by all of this beauty. So this is just a little snapshot into my living room and into my life. So I hope you'll copy some of these ideas and employ them in your own homes. Thank you.